Just bounce to this. Hey, how's it going, everyone? My name is Brandon Clements, and welcome back to part 12 of our Substance series in Substance Painter. And I have a few things that I want to show you guys before we get started today. So uh, let's go ahead and check out some of these uh, different websites that I was looking at. Um, this one here is something that I found on Gumroad. Uh, it's called Substance Tools, and uh, I'll leave the link of in the description. There's some really cool things on here. There's like this panel and vent maker, which is really handy. Uh, there's some like photographic references and these seams and stitches and then buttons and snaps and uh, all these look really, really great. So um, I thought this was interesting. Uh, these are kind of like alphas and different things that can uh, be put into your height maps and you know, you can set up your metallic maps and everything to look um, like these guys here. So I'm going to leave that in the description, take a look at that and uh, let's see, here's another one uh, from a guy named... Uh, I, I believe it's Paweł Lachowski. Um, I think it's a Polish name. He's a Polish artist. Um, really awesome stuff. So uh, definitely take a look at his Gumroad. He's got some really interesting substances, like this tin pack here is really cool. Um, just definitely check it out, and I uh, highly recommend uh, looking at his page. And then... Um, also check out the Substance Share site. Um, I'm logged in here as you can see and there are some really cool things that you can kind of go through and check out. There's different brushes. As you can see there's a lot of brushes and there's a lot of fill effects. Um, so let's just go ahead and look here at the brushes. So there's some really awesome brushes here and once you find one that you like uh, you just need to navigate to resources, your shelf, uh, algorithmic, presets, and then brushes and then you throw them into uh, this and restart substance and it'll be there for you. Okay, so I hadn't talked about that and just wanted to bring that to your attention. So we've done a pretty good job on this helmet. The only thing that I wanna go ahead and do is add some um, really dark color here for where the teeth are. Um, kinda add some more darkness and more dirt into these places here on the helmet. And then we need to add the blue stripes on the side. So let's go ahead and let's work on that really quickly. Let's go into the Stormtrooper white folder. So I went ahead and turned off all of these layers here. And I just want to add a new paint layer. And we'll just place it above the dirt and above our white plastic. And let's call this uh, dark cavities. And we can, turn, we can turn everything off if we would like. And this way it'll be really fast in our viewport. And I'm just going to be painting right along here in our 2D view. I think it's a lot easier to paint in this 2D view. Okay, so I used the 2D view and the 3D view to kind of go back and forth to add that dark part into that. So uh, let's go ahead and let's look at our dirt layers that we have. And uh, I think I'm going to add a new layer into the dirt. And let's see where we can put that. Okay, layer one. So let's move it up. And let's just call this uh, something like dark dirt. Maybe... Let's just name this like dark dirt cavity, something along those lines. And we can turn on our, let's turn on our white plastic and let's turn on our dirt. And then we can begin grabbing maybe this uh, dirt one or dirt two brush. Yeah, this dirt two looks pretty good. And we can turn on roughness and kind of make it really rough and uh, also our metallic being black would be fine. Okay, so we can paint with both of these. And just make it pretty dark throughout here. And just keep working our way around. 
And let's kind of zoom out and see what we got. Okay, maybe fill in some of these areas. Once we have something dark, then we can start working our way up um, from that dark kind of base. So let's see, maybe a little bit, another kind of layer of brownish. Let's go ahead and let's actually turn on symmetry as well. So we can paint a little bit faster. And then once we add that kind of color built on top, let's just go ahead and add a black mask. And I'm going to grab this Dirt 1 brush and kind of make it large and just kind of paint that back in, but not as intense as it was. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. And we'll turn back on all of these guys, all of our layers. Okay, so I got a new layer in here called Blue Stripes. It's going to be in the Stormtrooper White. And I went ahead and imported this Stripes map just by clicking and dragging it into this window from the shelf. And if we look at the uh, uh, Photoshop file, it's just uh, 13 rectangles that are kind of going vertical like that. So I just made, I just drew one of the rectangles and just uh, duplicated it and hold shift and just moved it down um, to make another layer in Photoshop. Okay, so um, now that we loaded in our stripes bitmap, I am going to use the projection brush uh, which is located up there on the toolbar, and I'm going to drag this into the base color. Okay, so let's try to line this up. I'm going to kind of make this just a little smaller by holding S on the keyboard and then right clicking to make it smaller. And uh, then I'm going to turn on symmetry so we can paint it on both sides and just begin painting. And just filling this all the way in. To right there. And then I can just put on a, uh, let's add a white mask. And then we'll just get in here close. We'll get the default soft brush. And we'll just paint this away. Let's go ahead and get black on our brush and um, I'm going to click once and hold shift and then click again and kind of trim this a little bit here. Kind of just brush this detail out. I don't want it going that far up onto the mask. And I think this will look alright um, just so that it looks like it was kind of warping around and uh, not falling onto that part of the helmet as much. We could also have a lot of fun with this mask too and make it look like that it's been chipped away. So I'm not gonna be super perfect on this part. We just need to come in and just kinda keep brushing it a little bit more. And then we could do uh, some of these different kinda, hit it with some of this dirt. Let's hit it with some of this. We could turn up the size jitter and the uh, the angle jitter is all the way turned up and the position jitter. We can kind of turn that up and make it a little more chaotic. Maybe change our brush around a little bit. and just add that and kind of chip it away. And then also I want to uh, grab this portion here. We'll go back to our regular paintbrush and I want to add a levels effect to it. And let's just say RG and B. And I just want to brighten this up.
And then let's come to the blue and make this more blue. Okay, so let's go ahead and export our textures. We'll go to File and then Export Textures. And we need to go ahead and navigate to where we're going to put those on our drive. So I will do that real quick. And then I have Substance Painter. And then I have Painter Exports. And let's change our configuration. Uh, there's all these awesome ones. We have Arnold. Um, we also have Redshift, uh, Unity and Unreal, and then V-Ray. Uh, we would like to do uh, PBR Metal Rough, or I'm sorry, PBR Spec Gloss from Metal Rough. And that will give us diffuse, specular, glossiness, normal, height, and emissive. I'm going to um, work on putting this into Octane. So let's go ahead and hit Export. And then I'm going to run that one more time. And I'm just going to do a regular PBR Metal Rough. And that will give us base color, roughness, metallic, normal, height, and emissive. And I'll be using the roughness from this portion in Octane. So let's go ahead and export. Okay, so once we got everything exported, here we are back inside of Cinema 4D in Octane. And I just quickly set up this little lighting um, setup so that we could see our texture. So this is how we load it back in. Um, Remember that we uh, did two exports. We did one that was specular glossiness. The other one was metallic roughness. And the only thing that we're going to use from the metal roughness is, of course, the roughness. So we have this loaded up here. You can see it says roughness. Diffuse. We are using the diffuse from the spec gloss. The spec from the spec gloss, of course. Um, the bump is actually just the height map. The normal is our normal map. And then we also have our index set to one. Uh, with that index set to one, then we can use this spec map exactly how we had it painted inside of Substance Painter. Okay, so um, then if you guys want to check this scene file out, I'll definitely post it on Gumroad. Um, and then you guys, you know, if you want to leave your support, please, uh, that would be very helpful if this helped you out. Um, so the red fill. Let's just kind of break down my little lighting setup here. Um, I have a camera, of course, it's 50 mil. Uh, I, the camera imager has a response curve. Uh, I've been using this one a lot, this underscore five. It's pretty cool. Um, and then I have the neutral response on. I have the vignette all the way up. And that kind of gives us this little backlight here of our cube. I just threw in a, a, a standard cube into the scene and put a really dark blue onto the diffuse channel and then I have a couple of like fill and kind of kick lights around this uh, around our little model here so um, let's look in this screen and on the uh, portion down here as well and we can kind of see where they're at these lights okay so once my computer kind of catches up here in a second okay cool so uh, our blue key is kind of off into the uh, back left over here and you can see that it's all the way blue and I just uh, set a power of 60 and the size of all these lights are 20 by 20 centimeters okay and then I have a red fill underneath of it uh, causing this right here and the color of this red fill is like 1300 so it's pretty red and then I just copied that one and kind of moved it off to the back uh, to the top portion Okay, so it's above the model, and it's pointing down at like a 45 degree angle. And then we have the other one in the back that's causing this kind of uh, a little bit of red. Um, the intensities of both of these are pretty low, 8 and 8. And then I have one underneath that is, again, set to 8 just to kind of give this a little bit of a glow. So this one's the, the more powerful in the bottom right, and then these other ones are just kind of making that fall off and trail this little bit of red. Uh, what's reflected in his uh, visor is the environment, uh, which is an HDR map of a uh, nighttime kind of city. So this is like a street lamp that's in his eye, but I thought it looked kind of cool. Maybe it was like a console and this was like, you know, some of the glow from the, um, from the ship that he's on. And then we have just like this kind of key light coming in. So uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in and supporting this uh, 
series. I know that we didn't spend a whole lot of time in Cinema 4D and Octane, but uh, I think it goes to show that, you know, if you take the time and you can paint your textures, you can create some really cool um, looks. Uh, right before we go, I just wanted to mention one more thing I just forgot while I was kind of putting us into the outro. Uh, I had to flip the model uh, to negative one to get it back to where it was painted inside of Substance Painter. So um, just remember that when you go into Substance Painter and you come back, that the uh, the X is exact opposite of each other in the software. So I just flipped it to negative one so that it would look exactly how it was inside of Substance Painter. Okay. So um, again, like I said, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Um, I also thought about doing one more tutorial, maybe in this vein of uh, the Stormtrooper helmet, maybe on like Tatooine or some kind of outdoor uh, setting. So if you guys think that's going to be cool, uh, let me know and I can post that one. But uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. So thanks a lot and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.